Welcome, welcome to this week's spooky episode of Free to Play Magic with your host, Krim, also known as the Asian Avenger. This week we're going to be playing the Graveyard Bash. That's right, that's the perfect deck to play in my favorite month, October. We've got a mishmash of tribals between zombies, spirits, and of course some saprolings, and a lot of graveyard recursion like cards from like rise from the grave and grave waker and things like that and also everything that dies seems to leave something behind like example doom to center and death bloom thalid and of course dying just spawns more hordes of zombies like open the graves this is the perfect deck for me this is my favorite time of the year let's get spooky let's all see what yargle glutton of urborg aka the people's champ can do all right, so like at the beginning of the video, you already saw the list. Uh, this is just pretty much going to be the stock list. Um, we're going to play a few regular games, not add any cards, and then after we play a few games, we'll see what we can improve on. Uh, but before we do that, let's go ahead and open some packs. As you can see, I've done some grinding off screen. Uh, I've got a little more gold, so let's see if we can crack anything good from these packs. Got a, a wild card. That's dope. All right, so let's try to... I mean... Buying packs, not the worst thing. Let's go ahead and get one Guilds, one Dominaria, and one Core 19. Let's see what we get from all of this. Hey, a Fungus. Ooh, Black-White card? Sweet. Ariel's pretty pretty cool. It's probably like one of my favorite limited cards in the Dominaria limited set. Ooh, we have a Thorn Lieutenant. Probably use that in our uh, Forest Mites deck. Now let's see, what does our Guilds pack open us? Wish that was a watery grave. Ooh, Midnight Reaper? That's perfect. Oh, wow, that is actually perfect for the deck. All right. Uh, well, I mean, we're going to still play the stock list first. So let's go ahead and get to it. Uh, you can see we can unlock a few other decks too. As I told you, there's uh, 10 decks total. We unlock Jungle Secrets, Strength in Numbers. So as I said, though, for this video, we're going to just be playing the Graveyard Bash. So let's go ahead and jam this. Man. Midnight Reaper, what a perfect open. Cannot wait to add that to the deck. Not only does it, you know, play with the zombie theme that we've already got going, like, it's just a good card overall. Oh, man, I was trying to hope, like, I was, like, I was, I was hoping for either that card or, you know, maybe a Death Baron and stuff like that. Oh, you know, lands and spells. You know, in if you know my luck, I probably don't get to draw lands that often, so I think I'm going to definitely keep this. Let's see if I get punished. Oh, well, I guess we're not blocking that. That's fine. Oh, look at that curve. Look at that curve, people. Two, three, four, and five. The Asian Avenger can count. Look at that. Oh, boy. Well, no blocks. How about that? Well, joke's on you now, because we're going to attack it with this Doom to Center that will not be blocking any of these cards that have amazing evasion. When are we going to start getting, like, flying zombies? Well, no, I guess... Bone Dragon is a Skeleton, right? So Skeleton Dragon doesn't count. Do we have any Zombie Flyers? I know we do. What am I forgetting? There's a Zombie Flyer in the format right now, if I recall. Okay, well, we can't let that stay around. That card's just gonna get real massive real quick. It gets, it gets a lot of power for every island they have. Like, every island they have, it becomes one stronger, and that just is not okay. Considering that we have nothing that flies, nothing that blocks that. And a good thing that we did it before they played the Siren Storm Tamer to protect it. Alright, so they tapped out. There is a discussion for me to... You know, you know what? Actually, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to attack first, see what they block and what they don't block. This will heavily determine what we do. They seem to be on the starter, the blue starter deck, but... Eh. Eh. Whatever. We'll trade that for a zombie. I don't really mind that the Doom to Center dies here. Go and just play this. We drain them for three. They're down to nine. They just took three from this. Uh, I, I figured they... I thought they would like possibly try to double block this to get rid of the three two, but it seems that's not the case. Uh, and we can also block this two one flyer or... Oh, no. Not this. Not this engine. This is a hard engine to beat. All right. Unfortunately, we did not... We do not kill the Siren Storm Tamer, so we have to get the Siren Storm Tamer dead. Dead and gone before we can try to murder the uh, the, Cla uh, the Cloaked Herald. Now, I don't know what combat tricks they're playing out of blue here. 
But I'm going to block them. Hopefully we don't get punished too hard here. Like, befuddle? Okay. But I still blocked it. So, I think, I think they might not know. I think that was just a, a misplay by our opponent. So let's go ahead and send all of these in. See how much damage we can get through to them. Uh, they might be they might double block one of the two twos or something. If they double block, that's totally fine, right? All right, so let's get rid of the let's get rid of the one one flyer. The one one flyer can be problematic because they probably they play some of these. Uh, if they have the white card though, the what is it? it it's the three three that like pumps it and then makes it indestructible. We can't have that. So we're just gonna go ahead and play. These cards. I mean, I'm trying to wait for this to die, but it, it seems that it, it won't be dying anytime soon. On the brighter side, we get to play the th uh, Thalid again. I don't hate the Thalid. Wait, what is this? It's like a fungus, but what does it look like? It looks like the Pokemon, like, Regice. And, like, all the... Oh! Okay. I didn't know our opponent was playing with Planeswalkers here. Okay. <laughs> all right, opponent. You got it. Seems they tapped out, so we can at least uh, murder the miscloaked herald. Okay, okay, opponent, you're dropping some uh, some big threats here, like Tezzeret. Oh, we're only one land shy. Come on. Uh, let's not attack with that. Let's swing with just these two at them. We're just gonna keep swinging at them. No need to do anything else. Hold on, does this protect? Only creatures, right? Not permanent, so like planeswalkers. Spell or ability that targets you or a creature you control. Sweet. So we're gonna blow this up. Get this out of the way. So this means they don't get to draw any more cards. Hopefully we draw our seventh land here. Meteor Golem blows up Tezzeret. You know, for a budget budget catch-all, this isn't bad. It leaves behind a 3-3 body. I'm actually a huge fan of that. Oh, I'm not a fan of that though. That's a little annoying. Alright. Come on, deck. Water, come on. Water not, really? All right, deck, one time. One time. Swamp off the top. Swamp off the top. Thank you. Please don't counter this, dude. I don't have an answer to this outside of this card. Please don't counter this. Maybe maybe we get lucky and they sack the Storm Tamer in thinking it protects it. Okay. That's totally fine. Nice. All right. All right, we got there. We got there. Starting off strong with the deck so far. Who needs to modify the deck, really? All right, all right. Into our next match, Teferi Avatar. I respect you, opponent. I see you're a person with fine taste. Now, we're currently 1-0, starting off quite strong with this mono black deck. I can't help but feel like this should just be that 3-2 Surveil if we ever open that. 3-4? and four? A little slow, but we have lands and spells. Lands and spells kind of worked for us last time, but we did have something on the two. Uh, all right, I th like whatever. Uh, th this is lands and spells. Oh, hello. Oh, I see. Opponent also has a swamp. Let's find out what if they're playing. All right, so it's black. Oh, wow, wow. Okay, the doom dissenter showing up, ready to party. I feel like I should be, like, listening to the Monster Mash while I play all month of October because, well, once again, this is my favorite month. Like, I absolutely love horror movies. So, like, this style of, like, I think my first ever deck back was, what, in Odyssey? It was, uh, it was like, tabletop with a bunch of friends. It wasn't anything serious, but it played the horror type. So I had, like, Childhood Nightmare. Uh, I guess I did have a good card. Maybe I was always just a tryhard, you know? I had a Psychotog in the main deck. And then uh, I had, like, Devouring, whatever, Monstros. I don't remember. It was, like, a 9-mana nine 9-9 nine nine from Invasion. And, like, you had to sack a card at the beginning of your upkeep where you had to sacrifice itself. It's it's obviously not ideal. It's, like, it's a very bad card. But I am, a, I like, like that was that was just the absolute nuts for me. Like, a 9-9? Nine nine? Oh, my gosh. Look how cool it looked. What? Come on. Come on. Leave my creature alone. I don't even get a swing with my weird little Xenomorph slash, I don't know, Resident Evil creature thing. I don't, like, this is so cool, though. I mean, the art is just perfect. It's just, whenever it attacks, though, each opponent loses two life. I like that. 
Uh, I'm going to murder that because that gives them and all their creatures hexproof. Shalai is a very powerful card. And on top of that, we got another Infectious Horror. Let's hope they don't have a Cleansing Nova or anything like that. Because I don't know if we're going to be able to come back from a clean board wipe here. But Shalai is a very good card. Like, if they have green, they can also put a 1-1 counter on each creature. So, that's... It gets very good late game. And it usually helps you survive. Like, this is the card I want against, like, Mono Red. Uh, right now in Standard, this card is perfect. It, it just protects you from all the burn. And it requires your opponent to use two burn spells or something on it. Like, that's why I like Black. Because Black has hard removal. Outside of, like, sp uh, Strangling Spores. Which, by the way, very on flavor. Whoever crafted these decks... Very flavorful. And like that, before we win, we gotta, of course, play the People's Champion, Yargle, the best 9-3 in the game that's legendary. Another win! 2-0! 2-0! Maybe we don't really have to modify this deck. We're 2-0 right now. It's kind of unreal. Uh, let's... We just opened... A, or well, hold on. We just unlocked a pack because we hit our 15th win for the week. So let's see what Guilds of Ravnica gets us. Price of Fame, another card we could probably play. Citywide Bus, destroy all creatures with toughness 4 or greater. Not exactly a huge fan of this card uh, in this style of deck, but maybe once we get to the Mono White uh, video, we can play this. Because I feel like whatever Mono White deck we're playing, we're going to be playing a bunch of small dinky creatures. Alright, so, two games into the down in the books. Let's take a look at what we can do to modify this. I mean... As I said earlier, we may not even have to. The deck is just so so good on its own. You know what? Let's play another game. Let's play another game. We don't need to modify it until what? We lose? Let's, let's wait till we may take our first loss. I mean, we may never lose. This deck is just pure gas. I love it. Maybe it's just because it's like, you know, RNG understands that uh, the month of October. Add Johnny. All right. Good luck, opponent. I see you with your very cute and kawaii faces in your name. Two, three, five. Look, lands and spells. I can't complain about lands and spells, so let's keep this. I like We do have a few one-drops, but I don't think I'm going to mulligan for a one-drop. Maybe that's the, like, already right off the bat, I feel like that's the one thing we could do. Probably start adding more one-drops to this deck, like Diagraph Ghoul, uh, stuff like that. Or whatever the one-mana 2-2 two -two zombie that comes into play tapped. Obviously, I'd love to add another Death Baron. Uh, because that pumps all of our zombies, and I love the idea of that. I'm going to murder this card because this card is just a never-ending, like, engine for, uh, like, uh, like, of card advantage. Because everything they play is about two power or less. Now, we're probably going to lose this race as it's a two power, but I had to see if they'd uh, block it. I gotta test my opponent, see if they're gonna do it. And we're gonna probably Strangling Spores that. Because that's an X3. X3s are a little hard to deal with right now. Oh, man. The Bugles. Daily Bugler. Uh, you know, I think we can afford a turn's worth of, uh, damage here. Let's just go ahead and leave this back to block the Martyr of Dusk. Alright. I will gladly trade this 1-1 for your 2-1. Oh, man, Death Baron right now is so good. When they, re when they like, reveal Death Baron, I was beyond excited. Like, that that's just a card that I'm in love with. So, I mean, just Zombie Lords. Like, Undead War Chief was also really cool. Unfortunately, that's not, like, in the format. And I think it'd be a little too powerful in the format. Let's go and shrink our Militia Bugler friend over here. Let's go ahead and start attacking with these zombies. Maybe they'll trade the 3-2. Trading the 3-2 for any of our 2-2s is a, a trade I'm willing to accept. They double block. That means that's a clean board wipe, right? And we have a lot of recursion in this deck, so I, I don't mind. I mean, obviously not for zombies, but... We can get back uh, the, whatever, Doom Dissenter if we need... Really, though, I want to save that for something that's actually more, uh, like, like the, the Fly Nostris. The Sovereign, the 3-4 Vampire that drains when it comes into the battlefield. Trade this off, sure. I, don't, I think that letting them have a 3-2 when we know they play it, like, this looks like the red-white starter deck. With the red-white starter deck in mind, they have a lot of, like, things like Trumpet Blast. Uh, that one spell that makes it so... You, all, all your creatures get plus one, plus zero, and are indestructible. It, it's, I forgot what that card's called. Whatever it is, it's three mana and white. I, I just gotta make sure they don't get to go too wide here. Once the deck goes too wide, we just can't win. This is not a play from behind type of deck. Now, if we draw our seventh land, I'm definitely blowing up Mentor, right? Oh, man. 
This deck could also use like a sack outlet. So maybe there's that uncommon creature. I forgot what it is. Oh, Yargle is a great target. Haha! -ha! You should have luminous bonded the great frog spirit. Which, by the way, it has uh, flavor text. Oh, come on! No, leave leave Yargle alone! Alright, whatever, opponent. That was very rude. I'm taking that personally. When Bells and Locks Lieutenant Yarkul grew too ambitious, the Demon Lord transformed him into a maggot. The frog that ate the maggot grew and grew until a ravenous spirit burst from its body. Well, okay. <laughs> sure, buddy. So we're going to take 2, 4, 5 this turn. We need the 7th land. We need the 7th land. We need to blow that up. We need to get our our, our favorite 9-3 back on the board. But it looks like it doesn't matter at this point. Oh, perfect. This is actually perfect. Never mind. We gain 3. This keeps us alive. We get to block something. Uh, whatever we block doesn't matter because we're going to end up at 2. But hopefully they don't have a lightning strike. Which I know the deck plays like 2 lightning strikes. Theirs, that is. Oh, mercy. Come on. Nice. All right, opponent. You destroyed me. We took our first L for the day. <clears throat> all right, all right, all right. Let's go ahead and make a change. Maybe I shouldn't have said all those things earlier. Well, I thought the deck was too strong. To, it, it didn't It didn't need to get uh, any kind of, uh, you know, fixing. But after getting bodied by our opponent... We now should probably move some things around. Um, I think that card is great, right? We definitely need Midnight Reaper as it is also a zombie. I mean, I'm not even opposed to getting this two-headed zombie going in uh, to the deck here. Um, there is a discussion for us to add red just so we can, like, like use Kazarov. Oh, we did open it. Whisper Agent. That's the card I was talking about earlier. Oh, wait, hold on. We can go blue-black, but... Is there enough for us to go blue and black? <clears throat> well, we can't play that because that requires us to play islands. We do have some bounce effects, which are going to be pretty nice because we can actually interact with our opponents. Um, well, this is only for Merfolk. We have sleep if we bring in blue. Do we have any sweet artifacts? Like blue, black, zombies with like an artifact? I mean, I don't think we have enough blue creatures to make this worthwhile, but... The Arcane Encyclopedia could just be something that we play in every deck, right? The card is just good on its own. Yogmoth's Vile Offering. Do we... If we add black-white... I mean, can we even add more, like, a second color? Really, I really has to, it really has to be worth it. Now, blue and black adds the uh, Riddle Master Sphinx, which is sweet. Gives us a Zahid, which gives us a second... What? That's two legendaries in between Yargle. Let me see here. So, that's Yargle, this... Oh, boy. What if we add red? Okay, let, let's say we ditch the red. Oh, uh, the blue, right? We add red to this. What does black red give us? No. They give us lightning strike, which gives us additional reach, which is pretty sweet. Uh, Captivating crew is pretty cool. Oh, we get a Varix. If we add red, we get Varix. Siege Gang, Demanding Dragon, Spark Tongue, Burning... Okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold the phone. Maybe, maybe we'll do that in a couple matches. Let's let's add these cards first. So we have some decent things things on the 3. I probably want better threats on the 4 drop. Like this strangling spores thing is like pretty cool. Uh we don't have many ways to make him discard. This is just a 1/3 that makes him discard and burns him for 2. Um well, I mean unless this is top deck mode then it does nothing and it's really bad. Um you know, let's add the midnight reaper. We added the two 1 drops. Veil Shade is like our budget, our budget uh, Dread Shade, so I guess we could do that. Um, I like this card. Maybe instead of Open the Graves, I mean Strangling Spores, let's drop both of those and just add double price to fame. Because that just feels like it's going to just be way more efficient, right? I mean, we get to do whatever we want. We get to kill whatever we want, we get to Surveil too, I like that. Uh, this is Flash, which is just pretty much the same as our Hired Blade. Except we get to Surveil. So we may as well just play that. Now, we don't have that many great things in blue for us to really consider that as, an, as a, a splash or whatever. I mean, what do we have? We have Disperse. We have Unexplained Disappearance. Um, we get to play... I mean, we get this Human Pirate, but... Pirates? That's not on theme with Zombies. 
Human Rogue. I mean, he he looks like he's celebrating October, so let's go ahead and keep that in. Uh, Water Knot is a bit rough as it is double blue. I don't know if I want that. Uh, randomly Merfolk, no. I say, you know what, chat? Uh, let, let, let's, yeah, yeah, chat. Let's just add Kazarov. Kazarov's a great legendary that just can close out the game, right? It's a sweet late game bomb, right? So we, what do we add? What do we add for that? Like, we add like four Cinder Barons, I guess? I mean, we might be disrupting our mana base for a late game bomb that... We'll, we'll try it. We'll try it. Let's just see how this deck go, does first. Uh, can I get some mountains, please? There we go. Added a mountain. I mean, Memorial to War, that'd be Memorial. How many lands do we have here? We have 25. That seems like the all right choice, uh, like number when we have like a decent amount of fours here. I don't hate that number. Um, we can go 24, I guess, if we really want to, because majority of our deck's going to be low to the ground. Uh, Skullduggery is a cheap one mana answer to some stuff. Really, we need to open more Death Barons and whatnot. Sky March Bloodletter. 2-2 two, two flying for three that drains one. Eh. This infectious horror is, though it looks great, kind of not that good. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep Yargle in, why not? That's two legendaries. We opened another legendary, and I could consider adding Yogmoths, like whatever you want to call it. But as of right now, not in need of that card. We dropped a three for a three. Um, Cobra Waltz. Calgo Skin Witch is a sweet way to discard. We can try to play that with the Fell Spectre if we really wanted to. But you know what? I'm actually willing to try this in over the Fell Spectre over the Infectious Horror. Because it flies first off and it makes him discard a card. Uh, I, I can get down with that. Maybe we just drop the Sky March Blood Letter. No, hold on, hold on. No, no. I really want to. Yeah, okay. This is good enough. Let's go ahead and drop one random card. Let's not take five ever here. Walking Corpse gives us another two drop. It's a zombie. I like this. This is better. This is better. Alright, let's give this a run for its money. Or see if it gives everyone a run for our money here. I hope it's worth it. Really hope it's worth it. On to match five. By no means. Well played, opponent. I like your name. Well played, buddy. I can respect that. A good name goes far. Oh, that's a little too slow. That's just not playable. I mean, technically it's all gas, right? It's all gas. Should I keep? <laughs> I'll keep that. That's a land. Helps us get closer to the frog spirit. Our base frog spirit lord. If only they made Yargle an X4. How about make it an 8-4? I would have been okay with that. This way it doesn't just die to a lightning strike when you pay 5 mana for it. My favorite though is like during Dom Draft. And then just made, and then putting dub on it became Sir Yargle. I like this. This is a, this is a deal I can accept. 1-1, one, one, we both get a... Well, you get a 1-1, one, one, I get a 2-2. Two, two. Let's see if they're willing to trade their Ajani's Pride Mate. That's something I'm willing to allow. That's fine. Cool. We, we got them to use their token because they're going to want to pump this, right? That was the bait there. I mean, obviously, they weren't going to block with that. They were going to block with the token to try to grow this. But I want to see if they attach more to this card. Okay? It's fine with me. Just going to go ahead and remove this now before it becomes a problem later. I love having hard removal. Oh, I love black. What a good color. Double block me? Double block me, daddy. Double block me. Come on. Come on. Do it. I'm right here. Uh, clearly, I'm not here for my Arnold impersonations either. This is not why I am here. <laughs> Believe it or not. We're going Yargs. We're playing Yargs. We're going to see if we can get there. It's 9-3. Let's start punching for 9 damage if we can. At the very least, it trades, or or at the, in this current board state, it does nothing. It just sits here and uh, stares very graciously at our opponent, as it has been luminously bounded. Vampire Sovereign, maybe my favorite uncommon in this, like, it's just maybe my favorite card in this deck. Five mana, three, four flyer that drains them for three. In this case, only drains them for three, because we know they're not doing anything else this game. Seriously, is this just Luminous Bonds dot deck? What's going on here? Opponent, thank you. I can attack? Me? Thank you. Gracious opponent, oh, I thank thee for allowing me to actually play stuff and attack. Oh, boy. Let's just get the damage through. 
I see no reason not to. Um, cool. Walking corpse, though, is just a two-two bear. Has the it having the zombie type is oddly relevant, and it kind of looks like me. Okay, all right. I see the stag. One would say his board is stagnant. <laughs> Again. Oh, I'm killing it. I think every time I say that, a part of me and part of the viewers just, I can feel, it's just like it burning. All right. One more land. One more land, right? One more land and we blow up the Sarah Angel. Because eventually we'll just be able to, oh my gosh. Uh, good game, opponent. <laughs> that is, that is over for us. We cannot kill that. It was a nice try. It was a nice try on our part. Well, maybe we should target it. <laughs> that is good game. Unbeatable, unkillable. We had this. This was our threat. We were going to try to close it out, but now we're going to take 11, so we're down to 5. Oh, boy. Can we even do anything about that? We have to draw another Vampire Sovereign? Well, that's burning us into the ground, but hey, maybe it gives us something better to do. I mean, we're dying anyways. May as well swing them all in, right? Let's, let's see. We draw anything good? I don't know what we would draw, to be honest with you. We'd have to draw some serious Christmas magic. Oh, no, opponent. All right, hit us. Here we go. No, don't. Just be nice. Tap Yargle. Don't, don't tap me. Oh, good game. Good game. Good game, opponent. That was rough. Zatulpa's actually just unkillable. We have no way of killing that card. Right? Like, we'd have to use, like, a million Skullduggeries. All right. We did the red splash for Kazarov or whatever. We added a few new zombies. Added a few more one-drops. You know, I'm already liking this. This is a lot better. Uh, we, I already see a lot more early interaction. We actually can see our turn one plays. Man, I really want a Death Baron. Like, I, I would strongly consider just crafting a Death Baron almost. I mean, look how many zombies we have. Like, this is just perfect. Now we've gone way up. Also, I keep looking at Skullduggery with the pirate in the background as the Iron Fist. R.I.P. Okay. You know, I chanced it. And uh, I did not get there. So, what are you going to do? I was like, yeah, well, you know, maybe we draw an untapped second land. But, hey, we can just do this next turn with Skullduggery, right? And if you're wondering what Skullduggery does, until end of turn, target creature you control gets plus one, plus one. And target creature an opponent controls gets minus one, minus one. All right, Diagraph Ghoul, for those that don't know, is just a friendly 2-2 that comes into play tapped. Man, I was willing to accept a land here. Uh, let's play this. Let's not trade the 2-2 for the 1-1. That feels bad. Or a bunch of 1-1s. Because we know we can kill one with Skullduggery. Oh, our opponent is a wizard. Okay, all right. This is problematic. <laughs> okay. Our opponent is a wizard. See if we can uh, get them to double block there. The Skullduggery! Target a creature you control. Dungeon target creature you control gets plus one, plus one. I want that one to get plus one, plus one. And let's kill that one. I am a little concerned because now they are probably going to pay three. What can they hit? They can hit Price of Fame. That's the only thing we have, I guess. Price of Fame... Uh, throw all our lands to the bottom. Okay. Ravenous Harpy. Hey, land number three. Never didn't have it. Never didn't have it. I mean, this has got to die at some point, right? May as well have it die to block, uh, like... This Ravenous Harpy looks like Gru or Drew or whatever from, uh, Despicable Me. <laughs> Steve Carell's character. Fused with, uh, the Falcon, or not Falcon, uh, Vulture from Spider-Man. So those that don't know what Chaos Wand does, here you go. It's a three-mana artifact. You pay four to tap it. Target opponent exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile an instant or sorcery card. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost, then put the exiled cards that weren't cast this way on the bottom of that library in any random order. That's right. Some, some serious shenanigans. How can we... Okay, what is our out here, right? We need to make it so that they attack with that and then we can swing? But will they ever attack with that? Probably not, right? We need the Skullduggery too, because we need to make it so that we can kill that token, which is gonna be a little problematic. Oh boy, here comes Price of Fame. I'm pretty sure we have 
Only price of fame, right? Oh, we have another Skullduggery. Right on. They're going to pump something and shrink something. Not the worst. Uh, we Oh, we have murder. We have murder, two price of fames, and a Skullduggery. We'll not be blocking either of these because they all fly. Perfect. Let's play this first. So now when this dies, we net a zombie, right? And then we can get it back after. No attackers, actually. Let's wait. Let's wait. Force them into a spot where they have to remove it. Like, mar Open the Graves is actually really good if we're trying to play, like, grind the long game here. It's, it, uh, what is it? March? Or, I mean, Open of the Graves uh, is whenever a non-token creature you control dies, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. And that is a deal I am willing to accept. Like, holy cow. We just left behind a 1-1 and got a 2-2. As long as they don't, like, have a board wipe here, I won't feel as bad. All right, Price of Fame is coming. Or Murder. There it is. Which one are they murdering? If I were them, I would murder the token, not the Dire Diagraph Ghoul. Because it's the same thing. They are unfortunately drawing all of our spells, so I don't know what we're supposed to do about this. There you go. Wow. Hey! There we go. That's what I like to see. Right, let's drain him. Let's pass it back. This will die. We're going to Grave Digger to get it back. We might be able to just do that and then also, what, swing? If they use this again, we don't have that many more spells left. We have... Oh yeah, if I were them, I would definitely be waiting. Uh, well, let's see if we can kill the Phoenix now. If we can kill the Phoenix now, that's great. They block it, this dies. We get to murder the token. Sure. Here comes... Oh, dude, they got pri Rise from the Graves. I forgot that card was here. Luckily, not too many good things in the graveyard. They have a Thalid, which is okay. That's a Thalid question. Ha <laughs> ha! Ah, I'm so funny. Ah, oh, stand up. Why I never did it. Block. Block. Block, darn you. Okay, <laughs> you can shock. Why are you not letting me block? Why are you not blocking? Just block. Block, my dude. Opponent over here, once again, still just being a wizard. Alright, sweet. So these will trade. We don't have any other rise from the- I mean, yeah, rise from the graves, right? So we're just gonna eat the phoenix right now. Phoenix has been in the way for a very long time here. We get a zombie. I'll take that trade. Man, this- this mono black deck is kind of gas, like... Maybe maybe this is like the sleeper, like the the deck that everyone looks over, right? Like this this is pretty good. I don't know. I mean, <clears throat> we had a second one of these, a Death Baron. Boy, you got a stew going. Okay. Yeah, that's that's all of our spells now. Price of Fame, Murder. Uh we we've used two murders. That's our last murder, I believe. Yeah, two murders. Uh yeah, the only spells that are left are my Price of Fames. So I will gladly block the Thalid. Give myself a 2-2. <laughs> Unless, of course, we draw the Price of Fame. They play a Legendary. We can also target it. Leaves up the perfect mana. We're saving the Yargster. We're going to try to drain him. Get this Flyer back. Man, this, this is just value. This deck can grind. I like it. I like it. This is pretty sweet. Um, Sure. I'll attack with this. No reason not to, right? If they, you know, want to trade the Thalid, they can. They get a 1-1. One, one, we get a 2-2 two, two anyways. All the same for me. Time to click on the Gargoyles while we wait for the opponent. What are they holding? They must be holding on to some major, like, threats. All right, opponent drew 7th land. What is the 7-mana threat they've been holding on to? Because I have to... Ooh... Demon of Catastrophes. That's that's a good one. That's a good one. So after, unless we draw the Price of Fame. Okay, cool. So we're going to have to kill that, right? That's got to go. This way we can swing through with our tutus. I'll leave that on top. Hope that he, uh, you know, let's just hope that our opponent doesn't use the wand, but I would be surprised if they didn't. We may as well, right? We may as well. Leave the I want to leave the flyer up because the flyer can drain. 
Oh, they didn't use the wand. Oh, hold on. It costs four to use. That's why. Dippy derp. Doug Dimmodome. On a Dimsdale Dimmodome. Dimmodome, Dimmodome. <clears throat> Siege Gang Commander. All right. So they actually have not used the wand, thus allowing us to draw what I believe to be our last spell. They get to shoot one thing. Whatever they shoot, though, won't matter at this point. Let's uh, let's go to combat here. Let's blow this up. Get another surveil in. This will be annoying. It shuffles it, right? So in a random order. So this will just essentially shuffle my deck. You sack a zombie or a goblin. That's fine with me. You can sack itself, too. That's what I would do if I were my opponent. Right? Yeah, you can sack itself. For those that don't know, Siege Gang Commander, when it enters a battlefield, create three 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens. And then you may pay two to sack a goblin, and it deals two damage to any target. Alright, they chose, chose wisely. Very good. Now we attack with these three. We're getting close to closing out the game here. Alright, that's fine with me. They're trading one of those. We get a zombie again. Dude, this card is seriously... Oh, not only is the art sweet, like, Vincent... Okay, I'm not, I'm not gonna... I'm trying not to butcher your name. I feel like I butcher somebody's name once every video, so I may as well continue the trend. Vincent... Proche? Proce? Pro Proche? Well, okay. Proche! It's fancier if I say Proche. All right, buddy. We're going to play the threat that's known, which is this. Leave him uh, leave him back. We're only going to play Flyers at this point. I want to get our, our other Grave Digger. We get our second Grave Digger, we can get the vi uh, Vampire Sovereign back. And then that's lethal, right? Unless they have a Vraska's Contempt. I mean, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to swing with this if they can't kill it. And not play the Skymarsh Bloodletter. I don't think we have any other spells. Yeah, it's as I thought. We do not have any other spells. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Good game. Thank you for the game's opponent. They were fun. All right. The deck is three and one. Three and one. Don't mind that. All right, on to our next match. Uh, you know, once again, Zatalpa, very, very good. Indestructible, probably, like, I even think an Adanto Vanguard would just, like, thoroughly pants us. Like, I don't know how we're beating that. <laughs> Indestructible's brutal. Hey, one and two, good enough. You know, I really love this game because it allows me to shuffle my hand, like, rapidly, like I would in real life. I do that, you know, I'm sure us as card players probably all do this in real life. I actually would even view my deck. So, like, you know, like, not view, like, look at the cards in it, but I'd be like, oh, you know, make sure it's all lined up. No cards are toppling over. Hmm. Hmm. Play this. The, f the red doesn't come till later, so let's just play the two drop. Let's be mana efficient. All right. So we're going to play the Cinder Barons this turn. Uh, I don't hate the splash of red so far. Maybe we could even add a little more red. Maybe add lightning strikes now. Go up a few more mountains. Go black red zombies, if you would. Maybe that's the next edit. I'm willing to let this happen. Like, they block the 1-1 one, one with the 1-2. That's fine. Or they double block. We kill off the 1-2. Okay, we kill off the 1-2, obviously. If they play the white card right now, though, we're going to be in a little bit of trouble. The one that gives us 2-2 two, two and indestructible. All right, so they're blue. We have to be ready for Jin, so always be ready to hold back a murder. Uh, We just... You know what? For the sake of tempo and whatnot, like, we can't give him too much time. We just got to keep pushing. We got to keep pushing damage. Especially because next turn we plan on dropping Yargs. The Yargster. And that thing perfectly trades with Yargle. Best 9-3 in the game, though. Best 9-3 in the game. Show me a counterspell. Sinister Sabotage. That's rough. Well, let's try ra uh, Rise from the Graves after this. See how it does. Gonna keep chipping him for three. Rise from the Graves is gonna do work for us here. We draw a land. We could probably dump our hand, right? The only... Oh, no. Okay, that needs to go. 
That needs to go right now. How do we beat that? How do we beat that? Like, we got to draw another murder. Price of fame. Please. One of those right now. I've been a good boy. Please. Nope. A swamp. All right. So we're going to just have to try to get Yargle. Yargle might be the only thing we can do. Like, we play Yargle. Right? Yargle makes it so that they have to respectfully block it. It's still a 9-3. They can't take the damage. I would like to just, you know, bounce that back, but that doesn't seem the case for me. Like, I'm gonna have to, or like, at least kill it with a murder or something. Oh, come on. That's so rough. That's pretty rough. Okay. Opponent has a 3-3 also, so that perfectly, like, chumps us. Or blocks all of our chumps. No! No! May as well play it. What am I hiding now, right? If they attack with that, we can double block that. If not, we're just going to take six. We're on a three-turn clock here. We still have a shot, right? Because we can still definitely kill Riddle Master Sphinx. We need a double block Meteor Golem, though. All right. What are they afraid of? A Death Baron? Well, good thing we drew a Swamp. Not like this. Not like this. Come on. Give me a removal spell. Not like this. Please. Okay, what, what if we do... Let's do, let's do heavier red stuff, right? Like, what, what else could we add in red? But let's take a look after this. All right. And like that, that's GG's. Good game, opponent. Time to concede. That was rough. That was rough. That was, uh, that was pretty rough for us. We just needed to get that rid of that 5-5. Five five. Maybe getting rid of the 3-3 three three earlier on. No, I still agree with that play. Yeah, I wanted to add more red, uh, more red threats, but... <laughs> Our opponent's name. <laughs> oh, man. Today's, like, you know what it is? It's a Saturday. Saturdays are definitely the days where you run into people with, uh, with, with some spicy names. I mean, we could add, uh, I don't know. I mean, we could add red to, more red to this. We already have it for the Kazarov. How heavy do we go on the red, though? We just say, let's say we add just removal. So it's black, red. It's mono black, or not mono black. It's just mostly black zombies. Splashing red. Splashing red for probably Shivan Fires. Uh, Shivan Fire, Shock, Lightning Strikes. At that point, we could also look into probably adding some more double red spells, like Demanding Dragon for the additional reach. I can't help but feel like there's probably a better threat to kill with murder. So, and plus we have Gravedigger to grab that back, and we have another copy of Death Bloom Thalad. Let's just deal the damage here. Drop another one. Just slowly run them out of creatures, and then the, like they'll have to use their burn spells on these things. If we ha we get a open from the graves or whatever, open the graves on the board, Blue Red's gonna have a very tough time. Gutter Snipe, oh boy, that is a card, ladies and gentlemen. That is a card. Well, let's see if they'll trade it. Will you trade me your gra uh, your gutter snipe? All right, I'll take that trade. Let's go ahead and play Grave Digger. Grab back a Thalid. Take the action. Next turn, we can go ahead and go Diagraph Thalid. Fiery Cannonade is a thing I will be watching for. All right. At least for this turn, we're safe from it. I mean, they get to take four, but they've been putting off damage for quite some time. At least with Fiery... Actually, I'm still going to play into it, right? Force him to have it. Because with Fiery Cannade, I still have a 1-1, one, one, I guess. Let's hope they just don't have it. Is this the blue-red starter deck? I don't remember the, the list for the blue-red starter deck, so... We'll have to see. Oh! Okay. Hey, there's why we play red. That's fine. I'm just going to play another 2-2. Two, two. Hopefully we get, like, so next turn we swing out, right? So that's three, five, they probably block there. So two, four, six, eight. We can close out the game if we draw a land with Vampire Sovereign. We really just need to push six damage. Oh my god! Again! Again! Why do I keep getting got by River's Rebuke? Oh! This game! Oh! What? This is the second video in a row where we get blown up by River's Rebuke. Oh, man. Okay, whatever. Whatever, didn't even notice, really. Oh, did something happen? Okay. 
Experimental Frenzy seems interesting coming out of our opponent's deck, though. Because if they, they're playing, like, Counter Magic and all this other stuff, they probably want to keep that a surprise, right? You know what? If you want to bounce my Vampire Sovereign, you can bounce my Vampire Sovereign at this point. Okay. <laughs> seems like they have a lot of bounce effects, so let's... Let's uh, take advantage of that. Opponent. Is opponent just storming off here? Alright, we gained three life back, so that lightning strike essentially got countered. Let me dude, don't don't like cast another river's rebuke or something obnoxious like that. That'll just like break my heart. I don't know if I can handle a second one in one game. Alright. Seems good. Not lava coil? Not lava coil. Because if they kill it and it's not Lava Coil, I can get it back with Gravedigger. And then I can also play a Diagraph. Banefire for four? Don't mind if you do. Let's play the known cards. Take the action. Get back a zombie. Okay, so they didn't have a Lava Coil. That feels great. Uh, we have this zombie, this zombie. We get to play Death Baron next turn. Hypothetically. Unless, of course, they counter it or burn it into the ground, which I could see happening since we've only seen one Shivan Fire and one Lightning Strike. There's got to be at least two to three more of, like, those cards in their hand. Okay, so I don't know if I, like, maybe our opponent just doesn't know, but they could actually be burning on our turn instead. If, you, if you're playing, like, spells like Lightning Strike and Shock, it's better to keep it, as, like, to do it on their turn most of the time. Because, like, example, I was willing to play my turn out entirely differently. And now I have information, you know what I mean? I'm going to just play a, a one of these, one of these, and just start trying to push through. We just need it. <clears throat> I'm just baiting out all their removal right now. It seems like they don't have any counter spells. All right, so it's a bounce spell. They're going to draw a card. Opponent. Please. They've just been sitting here and bouncing every threat we played or removing it. You are a very obnoxious opponent. I'm just trying to have a fun time here. Like, if we had our sixth land, this would just be entirely different, right? I'm just play this again. Let's test our opponent, see what they've got. That test their metal, okay? They, they understand. They're not falling for that trick. They have a lot of lands. If I could just get one more land, please. One land, please. One land, one time. Come on. I mean, two lands would be great here. Because then we could start getting to Kazarov. Oh, stop bouncing my threats. Stop bouncing my threats. It's so annoying. Wait, what? Why are you bouncing that? That doesn't make any sense. Is that BM? Are we getting BM'd? I don't understand. What's happening to me? <laughs> all right, all right, opponent. Okay, okay, okay. I see what's going on here. I see what's going on here. Let's just play this. Go for the win next turn. Let's go for the win. Let's throw that away in case we draw Rise from the Graves. We draw Rise from the Graves, you can bring it back. Not blocking. They clearly have a bounce or like some kind of kill spell, right? That has to be double burn. No blocks. I guess I'm just going to go to attacks. Alright. Sweet. <laughs> I guess their out was to see if I'd block. Can't end on a win. Can't end on a loss. Quite a vicious cycle. Let's play another game. Uh, I want to get... A, I just want to get, you know, bearings in with this deck. I want to see how well it does. Let's see here. Oh boy, no turn one, but we do have the turn two. That's fine. We'll just start with Cinder Barons. We have the payoff in red. Uh, so far, the red splash, I don't hate. I could. I, I'm so on the fence about adding more red cards, but I, maybe that is seriously the direction to go. All right. All right. Let's play another one of these. None of these are zombies yet, so there's no reason to play the Lord out there. Because if we put, uh, the, by the way, what I mean by Lord Effect is, uh, Lord Effects are anything that is like an anthem. Meaning, like, it pumps all your creatures by 1-1 one, one, or, you know, 2-2, two, two, whatever it is. So this one is a zombie lord, uh, Death Baron, that is. And we have no zombies out on the board right now, not until these die, at least. 
I don't want to put him out there because if the Death Baron dies, it feels bad. Plus, it seems like our opponent's on some kind of green-red big monsters. Big monsters means that Death Touch is going to just be very good. That's going to be our form of removal, right? It'll either read as all our creatures are unblockable or, you know, something else. Yeah. The card makes it so skeletons you control and other zombies you control get plus one, plus one, and have Death Touch. I like that deal. We might just actually get to the point where we can just cast this. This is five mana already. We're two lands away from playing this card. Kazarov. If you're wondering what Kazarov does, by the way, whenever a creature an opponent controls is dealt damage, put a 1-1 counter on Kazarov. You can pay for it to deal damage. I like that. Okay, so they're definitely winning this race. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to attack here. I need these to become zombies. I need these to become zombies really bad. Once they become zombies, we win that race, right? Oh, boy. Oh, pickles. Well, G. Williker pickles. So we still take three. It has trample. Feels bad. Wow, that's just lands across the board. Can we come back from this? Like, Carnage Tyrant into that, that's pretty rough, right? We deal six, they're only down to nine, so they have no need to actually block. This is only other zombies, so this does not have Death Touch or the Pump Effect. Let's play this and see if, uh, you know, see how well this does. We can send all of it blocking the Carnage Tyrant if we do. Or that is, uh, of course, unless they kill any of these. They can, we get to keep one of the zombies. Oh, man. Yeah. We need to draw our, like, removal. We need to draw our removal real bad. We have to, like, block all there. Or we could, I guess, hold on. We could have just all blocked here. No, that's terrible. It's better to just block all of the Carnage Tyrant. Because that one, if we top deck removal, we actually have a way to, like, kill this. Ah, uh, we did not top deck any removal there. So, it's looking like that's GG, right? Like, we can't afford them, like, casting anything for free. That's just too much. Alright, let's get back at Kazarov. We have to leave these back in hopes that we can use this as Death Touch to block. They haven't used a single removal spell. They probably have a fight spell or a burn spell. Galta is absolutely going to destroy us. And they're shocked, so that's game. Good game opponent. Unfortunate. You know, I... I thought we were doing alright. We drew... Okay. <laughs> Sure. Fight fighting my creatures or dealing your damage. You got it. You got it. I'm a I'm a let's let's let them have their fun. This is what they're here for. Cool. A second druid of the cow. You got it, buddy. No blocks. I'll lose with my little zombie on board. Thank you. Oh, brutal. Turns out, you know who doesn't care about the zombie horde? Dinosaurs don't. Alright. Into another match. Let's do this. Let's let's try to let's end on a win. Let's end on a win here. That that was that was brutal. That was brutal. We got literally stomped out. Dinosaurs are big threats confirmed. And how are you like I still think Carnage Tyrant. I mean, I know that I recommend that card to anyone that's building green because it's just obviously a powerful card. But the idea that it's uncounterable, hexproof, trample, that thing is overstated. I don't know. I think it's overstated. That card is absurd. I'd have to do so many things to, like, get rid of it. Like, make them, like, sack it if I were trying to use a sack effect. Maybe we could add a few Plague Crafters at a point because we'll need to because we also get destroyed by Vine Mare. But, come on. Uncounterable? I mean, <laughs> the truth, a.k.a. the horse, the Vine Mare is also brutal. So, so, we might need to, like, look into getting a tower in this deck. Detection Tower is, is a card right now that I'm overly hyped on. I just love that card. The card is just... Everything I need it to be. When I'm playing a uh, targeting a targeted removal based deck, it is just overperforming for me. Okay, so that that will be a problem. That will be a problem eventually. Uh, let's play everyone's favorite two headed zombie. That's probably just going to get shocked. Oh yeah, that's why I don't like this card that much. It dies to shock. Oh well. Make them have it. Twenty eighteen. Please don't have it. <laughs> mercy, mercy. Mercy, please. And and you know what? Blue and red, you know what that means, right? Be ready. Because that means our opponent will be playing River's Rebuke. Not today you won't. You won't get me today. Not with your River's Rebuke magic. Draining him. Pass it back. 
I can't tell if this deck, like, what? <laughs> I like the flavor and the whole theme of the deck, but I think, like, there should just be one tribal. I mean, once we can get to a point, like, maybe there's, a, like, there's a mono black aggro list that's out there that I probably think I'd be moving towards. It seems really, really good. Okay, I guess I'll play that again. Like, there's a mono black aggro deck. It uses four graveyard marshals. If we can get graveyard marshals, this could be mono black aggro or a zombie deck. It's fine. Uh, we could probably add, like, it plays, like, Isareth, um, and then it has, like, Ravenous Chupacabras, but we don't own any of those, and we need more, like, Midnight Reapers. There's definitely a low-to-the-ground deck here that can be super and, like, hyper-aggressive, and we don't have to use all these zombies. On it, please. This is really, really annoying, but it makes them use their whole turn to deal with it, and that I can, like, live with. If they counter this, whatever, right? Sweet. Gained our health back. Not attacking. We're gonna wait. We're gonna try to like double block the G2 lava uh, lava runner, even though we know that they're probably just gonna rivers rebuke us once they get six mana, with all the zombies out. But if if we can't get in that direction, I think a card I'd be looking into building is probably just another open the graves, open the graves, death baron, graveyard marshal. Those are all like really good cards here. I mean, even Isareth is like Isareth or Isareth. I don't know how you want to pronounce it. Either way, Isareth the Wakener seems like it'd be a good card. Um, no blocks, no blocks. Game, please. Please, game. I'm just gonna play all my zombies. Let's go. We're attacking with just this one. And maybe, and just maybe, if they have it, then we can... I mean, if we draw it, like a Death Baron would be pretty good here. Death Baron turns all these into... Uh, most of these into 3-3s three right here. Or I guess half of these, half of my team, unless these die this turn. Into three threes with Death Touch. We could just set up for like a one turn kill kind of thing here. We do have to be weary though, as I told you. They do have Rivers Rebuke. We know any blue deck right now, as long as you have any of the starter decks, you have at least one Rivers Rebuke. Game, please. Please, game. Okay, so we're going to murder this now. This That's enough from this card. This card's doing a little bit too much here. It's getting a little annoying. And we get to play another Diagraph Ghoul. I'm not going to kill these yet. I'm going to wait till they spend their resources to kill our Doom Dissenters. If they want to attack and I can like double block, then I'll trade that way. But otherwise, I'm not doing anything. All right, so they're at 10. Rivers Rebuke would be extremely annoying here if they have it. Because all of these will enter in the battlefield tapped. They'll hit me for 5. I'm down to 7. Knowing them, they're on blue-red. They probably have more burn. But I just absolutely refuse to kill my Doom's, uh, Doom Dissenters. I'm going to make them do it. Now if they like tap out for like whatever the blue-red Sphinx, they'll get to bounce one of these. They'll probably bounce one of my Diagraph Ghouls. That's still fine. We just need to draw a Death Baron. I want to draw a Death Baron right now so bad. And if they tap out, I'll just feel that much better about a Death Baron. Game, please. Man, they're in the tank. What are they tanking for? Maybe it's whether or not to use the Rivers Rebuke. Blink of an eye? Really? Again? That doesn't seem good. Why don't you bounce one of my two drops? Like Walking Corpse or something. Like at least Walking Corpse will... Okay. Sure. But seriously though, why not just like bounce my like Walking Corpse? Isn't that just strictly better? We're going to punch him for four. They're going to trade one. That's fine. So now we play the other one here. Can they cast... It, they, it'd have to be like, what? Lightning Strike? Shock? That would kill us. Sift does draw them a ton of cards here, so that's a little problematic. Uh, I'm probably just going to swing team, because that's lethal. And they can only block... Oh, I guess it's not lethal. Uh, yeah, it'll they'll be at one if they block one of the two twos, right? Come on. Fight with fire. Punch me for four? Punch me for four? Put, like, that's that's a thing. I could die here. Because they're at one. Yeah, okay. So they cast, what, two spells? We're dead? Two spells kills us. Two spells kills us. Alright, that's at least one. Alright, burn spell kills us. 
A lot of things kill us here. Oh, to any target? It's I thought it was only to creatures. Oh, man. That's so much more annoying. I didn't even pay attention to that. Repeating Barrage deals 3 damage at sorcery speed for 3 mana to any target. With Raid, you can return it to your hand. Man, that was rough. As I said, can't end on a loss. We gotta keep going. We gotta keep going. I mean, I think the deck is fine. Uh, our opponent there just... That bird. That bird ended up killing us. It was, I mean, it was better to that than the Drake, though. Drake would have definitely destroyed us. You know, we needed you last game, Death Baron. Why, why weren't you there? We needed Death Baron last game. That that point there, we would have won. We would have easily won. All right, land number three, please. Land number three. We have two draws. We have two draws. We have next turn and the turn after to get land number three. I ideally want to get up to land number four very easily. Oh, dead weight, rude. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna if I draw land number four, I'll play Death Baron. Yeah, okay, we're playing Death Baron. Make him use their removal. Exhaust some of the, all their removal spells, then play Gravedigger, get it back, or make it reoccur, and then uh, see if we can win that way. They missed a land drop, which is good for us. They did not kill it, unfortunately, so let's go ahead and punch them in the face with this. Alright, that's fine. It's not the worst thing. We got them to use their, like one of their removal spells. I'll take that. And at least now we kind of know what they play, right? They, they definitely play that card, Fungal Infection. Where there's one, there's probably another... He could go for the Fungal Infection again. Then they'd have two 1-1s. One Skullduggery. <laughs> that Skullduggery chain. In response, Skullduggery. In response to Skullduggery, Skullduggery. In response to Skullduggery, Skullduggery, Skullduggery. Okay, opponent. That was a clown fiesta of a move there. 4,000 IQ play. I like it. I like it. You've got me sold. That was funny. That's a 4,000 IQ play if I've ever seen one. Oh, man. We got bodied there. <laughs> Didn't play around Skullduggery 2, dude. Didn't play around Skullduggery 2. All right, let's play this. We have a murder in the event that we... We have a rise from the graves on top of that. We have to make him double block this. Sure. You have Skullduggery, like, one billion. Like, you're... Doesn't matter how we do it. You can just... It, they, they have Death Touch, so they're done. They're done. They're goner. All right. You know, I'm not opposed to using rise from the graves after this dies to get back the, you know, the Grave Digger, which then I can get back this after this dies. Game, at some point there will be other zombies besides Death Baron. This is the loneliest zombie lord of all time. Yeah, okay, that's fine. This point? We're getting this back. That comes back, we get a zombie lord again. We're just gonna keep recurring these zombies. You got nothing, dude. You got nothing. Just pass the turn. Pass the turn. When are we going to draw a Grave Waker, too? The 5-5 five five that flies and has and then comes back every time we pay, like, 6 or 7 mana? Oh, no! Oh, wait, it's legendary. This is great news for us. Come on. Lose, like, a ton of life. Oh, man. All right. Price of Fame. We got to kill that. Ooh! I'm digging it. You know, I don't hate more removal, I guess. I wanted to surveil there more than anything else. That's why I could have like I could have murdered next turn, but I like it was cheap. It was it was perfect. I just had two mana open, and that hey, that's what I'm talking about. Where's mine? I never see this card. They could pay seven. It enters the battlefield tapped, right? So Grave Waker is a five mana or six mana five five where it, with flying, and you can pay six return target creature card from a graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Oh, sorry, it does it doesn't resurrect itself. It resurrects things out of the graveyard. Even better than that we do not let that stay. Okay, opponent. Square up, buddy. Let's see what you got. I'm gonna click on these gargoyles. Probably not what a gargoyle makes for noises. Opponent is thinking. 
Oh, dude, that's so brutal. Well, good thing we kept removal, right? Oh, man. Wait, did I just give them all four? When do I get to put them in piles? Did I just give them all four? Oh, that's so annoying. I just accidentally gave them all four. Well, we're we going to pretend that I didn't do that. Uh... <laughs> uh... <laughs> We're going to pretend I didn't do that catastrophic level of punting. Uh, I am actually not trying to get into the NFL, believe it or not. Target a creature I control. Let's target this one. Target creature an opponent controls. Let's target that one. So they're down to two here. They have that. That puts them back up to two. They can flood the board because I'm an idiot. And they'd be dead right now, by the way. If I didn't, if I didn't just do that terrible punt, I I thought that it was sh like it's like Karn when you get to look, at, they show you the cards. You could you say okay first, and then you put a, then you could choose which one. I thought it was gonna be something like that, but instead, that was not the case. Feels terrible. Feels absolutely bad. Uh, this is better as a zombie, so let's send it in. So we have a three three. Do they have removal? Man, they wouldn't even, they would be dead right now. They would, we would, I would have split it into the two big threats, right? And the two small threats. Obviously, they picked the two big threats because they're just better. We have all, we had all the removal, so we could have killed them. What a bummer. What a bummer. On the brighter side, now we have this team of zombies here that are, oh, come on. Did we lose due to that misplay? That sucks. And we drew, oh, that's so bad. Send the team in. They all have death touch. If they don't block, they die. The only thing we leave back is death baron. We pretty much clear off their entire board. I'm surprised they didn't set themselves back up to 10. They double block to kill some of these zombies. That's still fine to me. Like, this blocks one. They double block the other. And then one dies, right? That's how they, that's how they should block. This way... I mean, well, they would die next turn, right? And none of these can connect. Not a single one of these can connect. Sure, they have death touch, death touch, death touch. Okay, cool. So we keep one zombie. Let's hope we can get there. Almost, like, I think they just gave the game back to us by not turning their life total to 10, right? Because had they turned it to 10, they could just block a few and then, and then like, kill us probably with Torgar. As always, at the end of all of our videos, we're going to be doing a must craft i will give you four cards that i highly recommend you build and these are the four for your graveyard bash you know monster ball monster mash style deck the reason why i pick these four is because well first off they're the most versatile they can be used in every deck uh any deck that uses black obviously uh graveyard marshal obviously going to be up front and center here this card is a three two for two and it can be top decked late game to just make it so that you refill your board entirely, exile all those cards that were sitting in your graveyard that were doing nothing anyways, and spawn an army of 2-2 zombies. Don't forget, though, that those zombies are tapped. They are tapped. Do not make the mistake of trying to, you know, make the zombie and then block. This card is just overall a powerhouse and a one-person a one army. Ravenous Chupacabra, a four mana 2-2, two -two. doesn't seem that sweet, but then you read that nice little text box there, and I don't mean the flavor text. Chupacabra enters the battlefield, destroys target creature and opponent controls. This is a four mana 2-2 two -two that kills any threat. It's unconditional, unless, of course, the threat has protection or is hexproof. It kills anything. This was insane in closed beta, and it's looking to return to form because you can kill Doom Whispers, anything like that, and leave a 2-2 two -two behind to block. You use this against red deck. You can kill the Chain Whirler, and now this sits behind and blocks like their, you know, their one drops, anything they try to play. And if they want to like get through with that, they have to use a removal spell on this. So this this card is just very good, definitely worth the four mana. You want to play set of these right off the bat, and they're uncommon. This is probably my favorite uncommon out of black right now in standard. Like I, I don't know what's better. I think this is probably my favorite black uncommon. If it isn't the premier removal spell of standard, Vraska's Contempt, 4 mana, instant speed, exile target creature or planeswalker, you gain 2 life. What more do I need to say? Look at that. It exiles, which is very important. It helps deal with the indestructible threats that we have an issue dealing with. It can also answer a planeswalker, which is big money, big time. 
Love that. And it gives you life gain. So you can use it against red deck to kind of just push yourself up above their burn range and just stay alive that way and close out the game. I can't say anything more. This is the best removal spell probably in standard still. Make sure you craft four of these. And lastly, Midnight Reaper. A 3 mana 3-2. Three, yeah, sure, it's 3 mana, but it has the zombie type, so it pairs well with your Death Barons. And of course, whenever a non-token creature you control dies, Midnight Reaper deals 1 damage to you and you draw a card. Look, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm okay paying a life to draw a card. Because we don't have many card advantage engines, so this will help us like just draw and draw and draw and draw, especially against those like removal-based decks. They'll have to choose whether A, to use the removal on this, or the you know bigger threatening creature that's on the board. Put your opponent in a tight bind. Love these four cards that we've uh, talked about right now. These are probably the most versatile that can go in a Golgari deck, a blue-black mid-range deck, any style of deck. Just make sure you craft these four cards that have been mentioned. And so that concludes this week's video. We've got the Graveyard Bash here today, and we got extra spooky, you know. And we've got to play zombies, we've got vampires, we had spirits, frog spirits in this case. Uh, we, we got to, like, make hordes of zombies through the open the graves. I absolutely love this deck. This was a lot of fun. Way more powerful than I thought it was. This is the starting deck, but as you can see, we moved throughout the video towards this build. Because we got lucky, we opened a Midnight Reaper. You know, and that's, that's just wonderful within itself. The 3 mana, 3 2 flash... It didn't do anything, so I figured it may as well use the Whisper Agent that we got, because it kind of just does the same thing, but we get to Surveil one. We also dropped the two 4-mana 3-3 uh, removal spells, because we had two Price of Fames, which can kill anything for 4, and Surveils too, but if it's also a Legendary creature, it costs 2 less. It's also the card I got to reveal. Thanks, Wizards. And then, you know, a, a lot of this deck felt pretty sweet. I liked you know, Vampire uh, vampire Sovereign, that did a lot better than I thought it would. That with Gravedigger just kept burning him for three. It gave the deck reach that we needed. Cards I definitely don't think we would want if we had a full collection. Probably Kazarov, which is the whole reason why we added the red. But I kind of... The deck is a little bit slow. We don't have enough cards in our collection to make it as aggressive as we'd like it to be. But since we're going to kind of do this weird aggro to mid-range thing, I may as well just add... Kazarov. Uh, Grave Waker we never drew. Meteor Golem is a sweet answer. Rise from the Graves did work when we drew it, but I think Open the Graves did a lot of work there. I actually wanted that card a lot more than I than I had it because we often played grindy games because our deck isn't fast enough yet. So if, if we were to actually talk about a deck that would be like how I'd like to see the final form of the deck, I'd have to say it's going to cut the red entirely. We're going to play mono black, but we've got Liliana. We've got Isareth, Isareth. I don't care. I probably butchered the name. I do apologize. <laughs> I want the full four Midnight Reapers. I want the full four Death Barons. And probably the best two drop you can get, Graveyard Marshal. Card is insane. You can draw that late game and exile all your like dead cards in the graveyard and turn them into 2-2 two -two zombies. And of course... Kite Sail Freebooter, another wonderful two drop that can disrupt control decks and like rip removal, rip a board wipe. Rune Raider is just kind of there as an additional card draw. Uh, that one isn't a must as we do have a decent amount of threes here. I could definitely see me dropping that, at those two for something else, like maybe some more twos, uh, like maybe the fourth Kite Sail Freebooter and like go up to a, I don't know, a single cast down or something like that. So we have a little bit more removal. Um, the, the Right now, the overall zombie theme, though, needs a little bit of help because it needs more one-drops, and we definitely don't have anything like Crypt Breaker. So, this is how the deck would look, though, if I were to go full on zombies. Death Baron, clearly just house, right? It's a zombie lord. Like, it's obviously good. It gives all your zombies death touch, or other zombies, and then plus one, plus one, thus providing you with a pretty much making it so all your zombies are unblockable. Vraska's Contempt, another very important card because it exiles and it gains you two and it can hit Planeswalkers. It can exile anything as long as it doesn't have Hexproof. The Cabal Strongholds are really just in here because, well, we have Jasu. Jasu's a 4-5 and, you know, I'm assuming there will be games where you're just going to have enough lands and enough swamps to kick that fairly easily around turn 6 or 7. The Lotleth Giant is just a cute way to kill you. You know, if your opponent taps out, you have a lot of zombies in there, this is a, or a lot of creatures in there, this is just a perfect, uh, just like, random... Random, like, Falcon Punch to the Dome. And then, of course, Luliana, self-explanatory, plays very well and synergizes very well with a zombie-style deck. Her minus two is also just removal, but more importantly, that minus three will allow you to recast 
all your zombies in the late game. So most of the time your opponent cannot let you untap with this because at that point you will be dropping all your zombies. It'll just, it'll be absurd. If you're looking at a sideboard for this deck, possibly look into like that mono black aggro deck and how it has four dread shades, especially since we play Cabal Stronghold. Dread shade is another three drop, but the thing here is that can close out a game instantly. So add that to the deck. These are my personal, like just my opinions on the cards. Uh, my ideas for certain builds doesn't mean it's law, but you know, let me know what you think drop a comment Feel free to stop by my channel sometime discuss see what you like see what you don't like other than that Let's go ahead and uh, talk about you know those important cards. I brought up and With that that concludes our uh, video this week. We uh, had a nice monster bash monster mash We had a blast. We had a ball. We created hordes of zombies the deck was amazingly fun and way more powerful than we thought we would. Thank you so much for coming back for my second episode. And know that there's another episode coming out. The next time, we're probably going to work on the mono red deck. Now, we're going to try to make it so that it's not a simple smork and bork and that kind of deck. We'll see what we can do because it seems like our collection runs deep in the mono red. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for coming back. Yours truly, the Asian Avenger, signing out. Thanks for watching the video! If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.